So I'm out and about for a walk with the dog. That's Saskia. Um, within two kilometers of my house during the COVID restrictions. And there's these lovely murals on a wall here on Barrack Lane in Drogheda to welcome visitors to the town. And you might recognize, well, I'm hoping you'll recognize some of the uh, characters on. I'm sorry about the noise, but there is still traffic. Supply lines are still open. People are still able to go to the shops. But uh, I, I believe this is Bowen. And you can see the Boyne River flowing out of her hair. Wait till you see this. This is beautiful. Look at this. There's the boat, of course, everybody who arrives into Ireland from the Mesolithic, from the end of the Ice Age forward, arrived by boat, many of them on the Boyne. The Amergin and the Milesians, for instance. And Amergin's buried nearby, and we'll go up to Millmount in a minute. And St. Patrick, for example. And there is Sheon Vru, Sheedan Broga, She Machanog. You know that as Newgrange. And there it is. Nicely uh, emblazoned on the wall here. And those two are the standing stones at Baltray, which overlook the sea. And of course, myself and Richard Moore discovered the winter solstice alignment of the large stone with Rockabill, which features very strongly in the story of Boyne and the River Boyne. And so if we move on up a bit, you'll see then the Viking ships. Of course, the Vikings uh, became a big uh, invading force in the 9th and 10th centuries. And they established, a little known fact is they established the first mint in Ireland and they established the city of Dublin. But another little known fact is that they had a stronghold or a long fort uh, along the coast at County Loud, not far from here, about 10, 12 miles distant, called uh, Lindokal, in which is modern day Anagasen. There's another Viking ship and a Viking warrior, look. But here is the most special, the most special uh, mural of them all, in my opinion. For me personally, is this one showing the high man, Aurgeen, with his right leg at Millmount, Amergin of the bright knee, holding the sun like Orion and the moon and Venus above his head. Fantastic. And this is based on the depiction of the high man that Richard Moore and I wrote about in Island of the Setting Sun, uh, and uh, which we had an episode of Irish Live Irish Myths about the other day. Because I'm out and about, I can't uh, remember exactly which episode it was. It might have been episode 12. So I just think that's lovely, and it's poetic. Aurgeen Glungyal, which means birth of song, bright knee, or bright kneed birth of song. The great Milesian bard poet who was the first of the brothers to set foot on the Boyne estuary uh, and who declared uh, Ireland to, to be theirs uh, and who chanted a very famous poem which included the lines, the lines, who but I knows the place where the sun sets, who knows the ages of the moon but I, what land is better than this island of the setting sun. And uh, shortly we will have a look at the mound of Millmount. You'll see the Martello Tower there, up on top of the hill, with its dominant position over the town. So thankfully I'm able to get to Millmount, even though I can't get to the other monuments. I can't get to Brunabonia at the moment, because it's too far away from my home. Millmount is within the two kilometre radius. And here's more, look. So many of you will know that in the uh, I think in the 12th and 13th centuries Drogheda was fortified by the Anglo-Normans and the greatest surviving uh, Barbican or gate is St. Lawrence Gate and I grew up in the shadow of that gate on the Cord Road and there's the town's first charter uh, granted by King John with the star and crescent the symbol of the star and crescent I think the cow and the calf mythology is contained within that. I think that was probably already a symbol of the town before John's charter.
and of course the cannons. There are uh, cannon replicas up at Millmount and there's Millmount itself. The Martello Tower that sits atop the mound. Saski has taken a breather as so we've uh, been walking for about a mile and a half in old money. I don't know what that is in kilometres. St. Oliver Plunkett whose head is kept in a, a glass casket in St. Peter's Parish Church in Drogheda. And of course the famous Battle of the Boyne which took place on the banks of the Boyne just a couple of miles west of the town at Oldbridge and it was announced today by the government that the park the public park at Oldbridge is open to the public but only for those who can get to it who live within a two kilometre radius of it unfortunately that doesn't include me John Boyle O'Reilly the famous poet and patriot born at Douth and was sent away to Fremantle in Australia on a slave ship uh, for his role in uh, Republican activities he, he he broke free from from uh, captivity in Australia and made his way to America where he founded the Boston Pilot newspaper and uh, was very very fondly in love with his home place and always wanted to return but of course he never could the cry of the dreamer which is the poem that he wrote um, I am tired of planning and toiling in the crowded hives of men heart weary of building and spoiling and spoiling and building again and I long for the dear old river where I dreamed my youth away for a dreamer lives forever and a toiler dies in a day and that is John Boyle O'Reilly poet and patriot Thomas Charles Wright who's a Drogheda man who founded the uh, Ecuadorian Navy believe it or not it's a fantastic amount of history here in our town. Mother Mary Martin of the Medical Missionaries of Mary who established Our Lady of Lourdes Hospital, uh, I think in the 1950s, and uh, who worked tirelessly to found this missionary hospital and this training hospital where international missionaries could come to get medical training. And that's another landmark overlooking the town we might get a look at in a, in a moment. And there's the Irish. I just crossed the road here safely looking every way the bridge at the ford the ancient name of Drogheda an old Irish the bridge by the ford and it was said that the bridge which is just past that big building there St Mary's Bridge was built beside the original fording point of the Boyne which of course in the days before bridges would have been the only way to cross the river and so there you have it on all of those murals lots and lots of history of Drogheda so we we walk on up the hill to have a look at Millmount, which is sort of most commonly known as a British military fort established. Well, the Martello Tower was built by the British Army in 1808. And uh, everybody thinks, you know, that they built the mound. They didn't build the mound. The mound, of course, according to local historians, was actually raised by the Normans, the Anglo-Normans when the town was fortified in the 13th century. But of course, the folklorists always said that Millmount, the mound, was uh, pre-Christian, 